Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Ramon. Oh, she wet. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing an installment of something I'm going to start on my channel called Fenty Friday, where every Friday I'm going to be doing a video of a specific theme or topic focused solely around Fenty Beauty products. Um, Fun fact, I used to work for Sephora and I actually got hired on a few months before Fenty launched in stores. And so I got to have a lot of uh, really cool hands-on training with the brand, see the launch, be there to really push the brand in store. It was my favorite brand overall. So any makeover I had to do, any client that needed any specific item, I went straight to Fenty. I love the brand, I know the brand really well, and I own a lot of the stuff. So to go along with the video's theme of Fenty Beauty, I'm going to be showing you how to achieve this look today using solely the matchsticks from the line. Just considering that it is March and the brand is doing their matchstick madness. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's keep on watching. So what is glass skin? Super, super popular concept that kind of erupted within the last year or so, just due to the big boom of everything Korean that came to the US, K-pop, Korean food, Korean skincare. And with that, we're basically gonna be mimicking the really dewy, supple, radiant look that you see a lot of uh, Korean actors and K-pop stars have where their skin looks so reflective and so juicy that it looks like it's translucent glass. I'm going to be showing you how to go from step one all the way through to achieve the Korean beauty glass skin look Step one for achieving glass skin, in my opinion, is the layer that goes underneath the makeup. Uh, ideally, the skin prep for this is what's going to really establish how radiant your skin is. And it's all about really layering hydrators, really moisturizing and preparing the skin to take on the product so that with the products on top of it, your skin is still super luminous and super dewy. So to do so today, I'm already skin prepped, but I'll show you what I use. Rinse my face off because I don't cleanse in the morning. And then I went in with a couple layers of this Secret Key Starting Treatment Essence. Um, it's a really awesome hydrating, nourishing essence. Uh, it's fermented and features a lot of really great skincare ingredients like niacinamide and galactomyces. So to follow that up, I did a couple layers of my Cosrx Aloe Soothing Sun Cream as SPF. Um, it's super, super moisturizing, so I generally skip moisturizer when I use that product. And I just made sure I put in ample amounts because not only do I want the sun benefits, but because it is so moisturizing and nourishing for the skin, it really helps to give you that really supple glow. And then on top of that, it's gonna be a little bit out of order for how some people are used to doing their skincare. I use my Neutrogena Hydro Boost Body Gel Cream, just targeted under the eye. I have dry under eyes, and so I like to focus just a little bit more hydration um, before I put my makeup on. So by the time I'm already putting my Neutrogena on, my sun cream's already set in. So it's been at least a few minutes. And to add one more final step of the skin prep, I like to prep my lips as well. You can use a lip balm, but I'm actually gonna go in today with the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm in the shade Glass Slipper. Just a nice clear glass, to really prep my lips. Ideally, before you start your makeup, especially if you're gonna be wearing some sort of lipstick, prepping your lips is a great step, just to make sure your lips are really juicy and succulent by the time you get to the end of your routine. So, skin's prepped. If you really want some more luminosity and to really promote that glow before you put makeup on, feel free to go in with a hydrating mist. Um, you could use the Fenty Beauty What It Do Refreshing Mist right before makeup application to just add one more final layer of hydration below. And we can get on to step two. So, your skin's prepped, you are good to go. And now we can get moving on to the actual foundation layer of the Korean beauty glass skin routine. So with the Korean glass skin look, the focus on the makeup is actually more on the skin itself. You really want a clear, even, balanced complexion. And then you just really uh, focus on then adding luminosity and radiance to the face. So this step, we're gonna focus on balancing out skin tone, diminishing any redness, spot concealing blemishes, and color correcting, just so that we have a nice, even canvas across the face. So to start that off, I'm gonna be starting with the Fenty Beauty Matchstick in the shade Maple. This is my perfect foundation shade. I'm basically going to be doing a super, super light medium layer to even out my skin tone. I'm gonna to be going in with the Fenty Beauty Full Body Foundation Brush to apply that. And after I do a light layer, I'll go in and spot conceal a little bit more where I require a little bit more pigments. So I'm gonna be taking the foundation brush and picking up the product directly from the matchstick. And with that, I'm going to start in the center of my face. 
Notice I do have a little bit of redness right here around my nose and I also do have a couple areas of blemishes that I want to take care of. But in reality, my skin tone is overall fairly balanced. So where I don't really need coverage, I might just do a super light layer, but I'm really focusing the coverage where I need to even things out, like around my nose, just a little bit under the eye. So as you can see, I have one half of my face fairly evened out with the matchstick. As you can see, I do have a little bit of skin still coming through. I didn't cover my face with a full coverage layer. Um, I just really want to balance things out, but now I'm going to go and finish off the other half. You notice that I'm stippling the product in. I'm not a big fan of swiping. For me, it just feels really unnatural. But because I'm trying to focus the pigment in certain spots, I'm placing the pigment and focusing it by stippling it on those specific areas. That's really how you achieve higher coverage with your products. If you're someone with a beard like myself, feel free to take the product down into your beard. It doesn't actually stick to the hair, so it's not as fully visible. But that being said, you don't necessarily have to if your beard does cover up your skin pretty well. Dope. So as you can see, I have an even layer across my entire face. My skin is fairly even now but I do still have a couple spots that I do want to spot conceal. So to do so, using the same matchstick, but a different brush, I am going to now pinpoint conceal using the same product. What's cool about the matchsticks is that they're super versatile products and they have a really wide range. I believe now it's up to 22 shades in their matte uh, collection that you can use to conceal, highlight, brighten, contour, bronze. So super versatile in their actual usage. Um, and you see you can screw them out pretty well, but we're going to see an example of building up coverage. I'm going to focus on some hyperpigmentation I have right here on the side of my face, as well as this one blemish. And you can see I'm using a pretty dense concealer brush. So it's a densely packed bristles in a more small area. And that just helps to amplify the coverage and you can see I'm taking the product placing it exactly where I need it by stippling and then I'm going around that area to diffuse that out so you don't have just like one spot of full coverage and it evenly blends out into the surrounding area and then to finish off step one I'm going to introduce a step of color correcting so part of creating that really even canvas for the glass skin is by neutralizing um, discoloration in the face to create that even balance and so to do so I'm going to be color correcting my under eye what is color correcting Essentially, you are taking any discoloration in your face, whether it's darkness or hyperpigmentation or redness, and you are neutralizing it by utilizing a color opposite from it on the color wheel. So for example, I'm going to be neutralizing the darkness under my eye. That darkness under the eye can be anywhere in the purple blue family of the color wheel. Opposite of that is generally like peachy oranges. So by using those peach colors, I'm canceling out that darkness and it evens it out so it's a lot more of an even colored face. So to do so, I'm going to be taking the matchstick in the shade Honey, and I'm going to be taking an eyeshadow brush. You could use the same concealer brush. I just like shadow brushes because it helps me to diffuse products out a little bit more even. And I'm going to be taking that peach and specifically targeting the areas of discoloration. If you go outside those areas and the color corrector is a bit more pigmented, you're essentially just going to have splotches of peach or orange on your face. So you really want to target the darkness specifically with the color corrector and not really go outside of those spots. So I'm taking mine into this little lower third of my eye, as well as up into the inner corner where I have some darkness, as well as right here on the outside third of my eye, where I tend to have like a little bit more blue happening. And that just cancels out that darkness and now I have really, really even complexion on this side compared to this side where you can still see some darkness. Now, I don't have a lot of darkness. It's not that severe on me. I've seen some people where it's a very, very pronounced darkness. With that, you want to match the intensity of the color you're correcting in your color corrector. So if you have really, really deep 
uh, darkness in your under eyes or really deep scarring, you might want to use a more deep shade of your color corrector. So a deeper salmon, a deeper peach color. You also want to match your color corrector to the depth of your skin. So if you have a more fair complexion, you're going to want to use a more light peachy salmon. Whereas if you have a really rich complexion, you might want to get into those orange, red, orange colors because it's going to match the intensity of pigment in your skin as well. You can see I'm using a brush for this. Feel free to use whatever tools you like. I have brushes. There's also the Fenty Beauty sponge. You could also just use your fingers. These, because they're cream to powder products, the cream is really emollient and with your body heat, it does actually meld into the skin really well. So I'll show you an example of that. Just taking my ring finger and a little bit of the product and I am just stippling that in to my under eye. A lot of makeup products react really well to the warmth in your skin. So a lot of times you might find it more beneficial to use your fingers. And voila, that is step one of the Korean Beauty Glass Skin Makeup. As you can see, it just involves evening out your skin, really giving you a nice, even, flawless canvas to then continue on. So with this next step of the Korean Beauty Glass Skin Routine, we're gonna start sculpting the face. So now we have a really even canvas, but it looks really flat. We need to bring a little bit more life and dimension to the face. And to do so, we're going to be taking a couple of the matchsticks to both brighten and to sculpt and contour. <laughs> One second, <laughs> I have a lot. So to brighten, I'm gonna be taking the matchstick in the shade Bamboo. And we're going to be focusing that in the center of the face, ideally really focusing the pigment in the inner part underneath my eyes, diffusing that out, and then a little bit in the middle of the forehead as well. So same as before, I'm going to be taking the product straight from the matchstick. This time I'm going to be using the Fenty Beauty sponge though. I'm just going to get a little bit off. And then we're really going to start by focusing the pigment right here in the under eye. I diffuse mine out and down to really start bringing light into my face. I have a pretty uh, slender face, so I tend to bring my highlight out a little bit further. If you have a wider face, you can feel free to keep that highlighting a little bit more centralized. The reason I like to take the product with the sponge is because with the sponge, I have a little bit more control in how heavy I can apply it. And for this, I'm not going for super heavy highlight. I'm going for something that's a lot more subtle and subdued. With glass skin, it's all about really, really subtle, really, really even blending. You can't really tell where your highlight ends, your blush starts, your contour is. It's all super, super even blending all throughout. What is that? What is that? I brightened up the under eye and now I'm gonna go in and just do a little bit right in the center of my forehead. Cause again, we wanna make it look like there's a spotlight shining right on the center of your face. Dope. So with the brightening done, we're gonna go into sculpting the perimeter of the face. And by doing so, we're gonna now take the matchstick in Mocha and we're gonna start building up a really, really light layer of contour. And you're probably saying, well, Ramon, I thought the whole focus was to even out the skin. Why are we adding all these other colors? And the reason for that is your skin's not flat. If you look at someone, their face has dimension. If you look at someone who does nothing but foundation on the face, it just looks really like muted and dull. Starting to incorporate more dimension by contouring and highlighting, this makes things look a lot more lifelike. But the difference between something like glass skin and full glam is that Again, it's more subdued, it's really soft, it's not harsh, it's not severe contour. You're just taking the face God gave you and making it a little bit better. When I contour, I like to go where my cheekbone is, which for me, right, you would normally contour underneath the cheekbones right here. I go a little bit higher just to kind of elevate and lift things up. And I'm going, same thing with the forehead, more in the hairline and then blending it towards the center of my forehead. Something I like to do, which I actually kind of learned from just looking at how people do their makeup, and um, from the Fenty Beauty global artists as well, is taking a little bit of the contour color and blending it on the outer third of the eye, outward and upward, as a way of adding dimension to the eye, but also lifting up the eye as well. And I'm also gonna do the same thing, but actually do it here in the inner part of the eye against the bridge of the nose, basically creating a shadow from the inside of my brow down the bridge of my nose. And if you look and you think you've done a little bit too harsh of a contour, feel free to take a clean part of your sponge, maybe diffuse it out a little bit. And if that don't work, feel free to take the same shade you use as your foundation and kind of blend out the contour with that same shade. And then pro tip, if you really want to cut that little eye contour and really make your eye look a little bit more lifted, go back to your highlight shade and take something that's a little bit more 
small in surface area, like this little tip of my sponge. And I'm gonna go through and actually from this little corner of my eye, follow a line up. And so with that, at this point, you have even base, you've brightened, you've shaded, so now you have a really, really multi-dimensional look that's still very, very soft. And now we're gonna go on to step three of the glass skin routine. Awesome, so at this point, we're in the third final step of the K-Beauty glass skin routine. And this part of the routine is really about putting the finishing touches on the look to really give you the final polished K-Beauty glass skin look. So to start, I would say step one is to do your brows. Now with the glass skin look, and if you look at K-Beauty, it's really not about super cut, super chiseled, super outlined brows. It's really about just emphasizing the brow that you have, maybe making it look a little bit more full. So to do so, I'm gonna be taking the Fenty Beauty Brow Pencil in the shade Black Brown. And what I'm gonna focus on is really combing out the brow, defining the bottom half of it, but just making it look a lot more fluffy and filling in any sparse areas that I might have. Going in with the brush end, I'm going to start by combing up my brow hairs, combing up and out, to kind of define a little bit more of the shape that I want. And then I'm literally going to just take the pencil and outline the bottom of my brow, kind of like stenciling. Here I got a little bit of a bald spot, so I kind of start to create a brow where there is none, but still following the line that I started with. And then I like to define a little bit of the top of the brow too, so I'm just going to do a super, super light line. Nothing too dramatic. Again, keyword here, soft. And throughout the process, don't be afraid to keep moving your brow. Manipulate your brow hair so you can see a little bit more of a clear shape, so you can actually fill in your brow a little bit more precisely. Once you have your brow outlined, feel free to go in and start filling in a little bit of sparser areas. For me, that's just more on the tail of the brow, just to make that look a little bit more full. But also just a little bit more here in the front. So you see one brow outline versus another. This, I'm really just defining a shape that I like. This is my natural brow. They're not worlds apart. They're definitely cousins, not sisters. And I'm gonna go through and do the same with the other brow. And if you're like me and you have sunscreen buildup in your brow, you're just gonna go and comb that out. So you can see I got both my brows outlined. We're not leaving the house like this. Trust me, we're gonna blend those out. We're gonna take the brush end of the Fenty Beauty Brow Pencil and we're gonna start essentially diffusing that line into the brow itself. So I start by taking it directly where I put that line and I start brushing it into my actual brow hairs. I was gonna soften and blend the line so it's not as harsh and it actually blends in with your brow. And then once everything blended in, feel free to, again, brush out your brow, get it in the shape that you want, and voila, your brows are done. They're not heavy, they're not super, super chiseled or whatever, but they are filled in brows. They just look a lot more full, a lot more clean. Something that I like to do that is personal preference, so you don't have to do this, is I like to go in and with my brow pencil, actually emphasize any of the birthmarks that I have on my face. Um, something that I like to do with makeup is I try to make it look as skin-like and natural as possible and that's something that glass skin is all about. So by going through and kind of emphasizing those birthmarks, you're really enhancing the fact that it's your skin but better. So taking the brow pencil, just go to town. I got one right there. I got one right there and that's a big one. Right there. Right there, right there. And if you're gonna do this, what I will say is don't make them all like one dimensional, really dark spots. Go in and soften a couple of them by just tapping them out so they're not as strongly pigmented. Next step is going to be just adding a little bit of color into the face. Um, something I noticed when I was in Seoul, looking at all the girls and how they did their makeup was that there was always like a very, very subtle blushy look. And that is really popular in a lot of the makeup looks. So I'm gonna be taking a couple of the matchsticks in the shimmery colors to subtly add a little bit of color and life back into my face. I'm going to start first with the matchstick in the color Chili Mango. It's a really cute orangey matchstick with a like gold reflect in it. And I personally really like orange just because it goes really well with my skin tone, medium tan. So 
You can choose a matchstick for the shade of skin that you have, that you like, that's more flattering to you. There's a bunch of colors of the shimmery matchsticks. She has a newer collection in store that's about eight shades, but she also has the OG ones as well that you can get online still. Um, Chili Mango is one of the original ones. I don't have any of the new ones, but feel free to play around, find the color that works best for you. Similar to before, I'm going to take the product straight from the matchstick. This time I'm going to go in with this little foundation brush from Sephora, and I'm just going to pick up some of that color. And super lightly, I'm going to start stippling it into the apples of my cheeks. So kind of a little bit above slash where you put your contour before. I like to start right about here and just kind of stipple it on. My guideline for it is I make a face. You know that face you make when like someone has a secret and you know a secret and you're over here like, that's the face I make. Because then with that, you kind of see a really good shape of where your cheek is. And you just follow that up. I like to bring blushy colors up my temple as well as kind of carry it into my brow bone crease area a little bit. Just because I feel like it brings a little bit more continuity with my face. And the name of the game here again is subtle. I'm not trying to look for super, super strong blush looks. I mean, if that's what you're about, feel free, go ham, live your life. And then I'm actually going to follow that up with another matchstick. This one's going to be in the shade Yacht Life. Yacht Life is a less about pigment payoff in terms of color payoff. It is a really subtle peachy pink champagne color, but it actually is more in line with illuminating. So it's just going to give you a little bit of a, the base layer of glow and highlight in the face. And using the same brush, taking the product right off the matchstick, I'm going to focus that a little bit higher on the cheekbones. I take my highlight right up underneath my uh, under eye and carry that up. Brow bone as well. And then I like to personally put highlight right here in the center of my brow, right above my nose. We're trying to figure out where highlight goes. It's really helpful to look in the light and kind of see where light reflects off your face naturally. The way I did it once was just putting a heavy, heavy layer of moisturizer on and really seeing where my skin glowed when I was sitting in front of a light. So for me, that's more right here, right here, center of my brows, and also right above my pupils. Since my eyelashes point straight down, my eyelids are super, super visible, and therefore there is a lot of shine there. And then a little bit right above the brow. And to do the part right above my pupils, like I said, I just take a little bit with my finger. And then I just place that on. So now that I've laid out pretty much 90% of the product, I'm gonna go through and start setting things before I put down the final, final touches of the glass skin look. So first things first, we're going to set with a light layer of powder. The whole look for glass skin, again, is dewy, supple skin. You really want it to be radiant and glowy. If you're someone like me that does have oily skin, though, you do need to incorporate a little bit of powder just to be able to control the oil so that you don't have unflattering oily spots on your face so that you're really focusing the attention on the radiant dew that you have going on in the perimeter of your face. To do so, I'm going to be taking the Fenty Beauty Invisimat Blotting Powder and I'm gonna be taking a blending shadow brush to start doing a light set right underneath my eyes. Before we go in and set, just because everything on your face is super emollient and creamy and it's on top of products that are emollient and creamy as well, I'm just gonna do a super quick finger blend underneath my eyes just to make sure I don't have any profuse creasing because you don't want to set creases. You want to set stuff to prevent creases. Something else I'm going to do, which was a trick that I actually learned from YouTube from a uh, makeup artist channel. His name is Matthias for Makeup. He had a guest on his channel that kind of gave concealer tips and tricks. And one of the tips he gave to prevent under eye creasing is to take a bottom of a makeup brush that's clean and sanitized and essentially roll it underneath the eye to help pick up any excess product, but also smooth out whatever is there as well. And so I'm just gonna do this under this eye because I do have the tendency to crease heavily under here. Do a little bit of the same over here. And then picking up some of the Invisimat powder with this shadow brush, I'm just gonna go through and press that in the areas that I crease the most, which for me tends to be the inner third of the eye. 
as well as actually the outer third of my eye. Since I smile a lot and I'm really expressive, I do tend to get a little bit of crinkling out here. And then taking the Fenty Beauty sponge, I'm going to take more Invisimat powder and press it into the areas that I tend to get more shiny, just to set those and diminish a little bit of that shine. For me, that's right here next to my nose and on the sides of my nose, a little bit on the bridge of the nose as well, and then center of the forehead itself. Next up to set is I'm actually going to take a setting mist to just spray all over my face. So part of the glass skin look, again, is really, really radiant, dewy face. I find setting mist function to set the makeup, meld down any powder on the face so that it looks super skin-like, but also just introduce radiance and glow back into the makeup if you are using products that tend to be a little bit more mattifying or you've taken away some of the glow from your skin. So. Fenty does have their What It Do Refreshing Mist. Mine broke, so I don't have it. So in this place, I'm gonna be using the Milani Make It Last setting spray. I'm gonna do a very liberal layer all over my face. Focusing on the perimeter mainly. And then we're just gonna let that set. And as that's finishing setting down, I'm gonna talk about the last step of the glass skin routine, which is just adding a little bit more dew and glow. I'm all about the glow. I'm all about the dew. I'm all about layering highlighters and illuminating products on the face. So to finish off the look, I'm actually going to do two more steps to really make things pop if you want to do the most. So the first product I'm going to be using is the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Diamond Balm in the shade How Many Carrots. It is a super glittery, super shimmery, high shine highlighter that I like to use on high points of my cheeks only. If you use in moderation, it makes your skin look super wet and it's super nice to introduce and it's a super good product to use for these glass skin looks just because it does really make your skin look juicy. And with that, again, I'm focusing it mainly on the high points of my face. So right above my apple of cheek here, underneath my brow bone, center of my brows. And I more stipple this on. That setting spray, because it does leave your skin a little bit tacky, just grabs onto that highlighter really well and intensifies that glow. You can see that really amped up the look. My cheeks look really, really good. But we are gonna be introducing one more product into the routine. That's gonna be the final step. That's gonna be the matchstick in the shade Pearl, which is a new launch from Fenty. It's a super, super cool matchstick in that it's not a matte formula, it's not a shimmer formula. It's more of a balm texture. So what it's gonna do basically with your body heat, it's gonna meld down into the super high sheen, glossy glow. That's just gonna give your skin that final touch of like wet. You are juicy for the gods. So you can take this with your finger, pat it on. I'm gonna be taking the butt of my just to control a little bit of that and to prevent it from moving any product underneath it. And again, focusing that right on the high points of my cheeks. What I like about this product specifically is it gives you the opportunity to have a really, really natural, radiant look without adding any glimmer or glitter to your face. So you want to just throw this on by itself on top of bare skin or just do a very bare makeup look with this. Your skin's going to look flawless and natural and radiant and glowy. Can you see that? That's glass skin, baby. Dope. At this point, you're essentially done. If you want to add any final touches, do whatever you want to do, feel free to. I'm going to be adding another layer of gloss. I'm going to be doing the Fenty Gloss Balm in the shade Hot Chocolate. Super, super rich, hyper iridescent, semi-pigmented purple gloss. I like it because on my lips, it doesn't have intense color payoff, but it does really emphasize the natural color of my lip. out being too dark. Fun fact, before the Matchstick and Pro came out, I actually would just take the gloss bomb and put it on my cheek to give me like a really dewy look. So if you don't want to go out and get that Matchstick and you have the gloss, you are more than able to achieve this look. 
And I'm gonna do one more soft set just to kind of reduce the shininess on the center of my face and then I'll be all done. Dope. So you saw me go from bare face to this with really, really easy, simple steps. Overall, really, this should only take you about 10 minutes to achieve the look overall. But the primary bases you want to cover are evening out your skin tone with foundation and color corrector, sculpting out your face a little bit with some brightening and contouring or bronzing, and then adding a little bit of color and really amping up the glow in your face. So super easy, super simple look to achieve. I did this using all Fenty Beauty products, more specifically using the Matchsticks line, which is a super versatile, multi-use uh, line of products in the Fenty Beauty line. I strongly recommend checking it out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I am more than happy to answer those either in the comments or in the next video. If you have any requests for Fenty Fridays or any future videos, leave those as well. I am more than happy to film whatever you guys want to see. Feel free to like the video and subscribe down below for more content. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope you have a happy Friday.